When we multiply matrices together, the most important thing that we have to take note of is their order. In this example, matrix A times matrix B is possible because the number of columns in matrix A is the same as the number of rows in matrix B. This is the check that we have to make before we start multiplying. If we tried to multiply matrix B times matrix A, we would see that it's not possible because the number of columns in matrix B is different to the number of rows in matrix A. When multiplying matrices, we have to multiply every row of the first matrix with every column of the second matrix. In this example, we would start with row 1 of matrix A and multiply it by each column in matrix B. Then we would take row 2 of matrix A and repeat the process. Your answer will be in the same position as the row and column that you're multiplying. Now let's look at how this would look in theory. So if we were to start with row 1 from matrix A and multiply it by column 1 from matrix B, this is where our first number or element would be. Multiplying row 1 with column 2 would give us the answer in row 1, column 2 of our answer matrix, and so on. So let's put this theory into practice. First, we're going to multiply row 1 in matrix A with column 1 from matrix B, element by element. First, we're going to multiply the first element in matrix A with the first element in matrix B. We add this to the product of the next elements in each row and column. So that would be the second element in row 1 multiplied by the second element in column 1 of each matrix. The process is then repeated with the last element in row 1 and the last element in column 1 from matrix A and B. As you can see, that can be simplified to a single number, which we'll do with all of our working out at the very end. Now we can repeat this process, staying with the row 1 from matrix A and multiplying it by column 2 in matrix B. Add this to the product of the next corresponding elements in each row and column and continue the process. And this is what we end up with. Each line of working out, we simplify, and eventually we have each individual element in matrix A, B. Now you'll notice that the order of our answer matrix can be seen by looking at the orders of the original matrices A and B. It's the outside numbers, two by three. Let's look at another example now. We have matrix X and Y. We want to multiply X times Y. First, we need to check the orders and see if we can actually multiply these two matrices. When we look at the number of columns in matrix X and the number of rows in matrix Y, we can actually say that X times Y is possible because those two numbers are the same. We can also predict the order that our answer matrix will be here. We should expect to have three rows and two columns in the answer. Once we've given ourselves enough space to write our working out, we can start to multiply the first row with the first column of each matrix. And we continue like we have in the past, taking each row from matrix X and multiplying it by each column in matrix Y. As we've reached the end, we can check that we have three rows and two columns like we predicted. Now we would simplify each individual calculation, work out each little bracket, and simplify until we have our answer. So like we've seen, multiplying matrices without the use of technology can get a little bit messy, but it's not complicated as long as we pay attention to where the numbers are going and where they're coming from. Remember to like this video and subscribe if you found it useful.